Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, to the world away, and welcome to a new week. Uh, it's a new week, which means we've got another ET update, and you noticed I've uh, revolved the camera around because it is actually in the background that I am going to show you what it looks like in the background. We're not actually going to do a reveal for this until February the 18th, when uh, myself and Phil Siegel, Spruverse, will be on the Thursday night live stream showing these off. But you will see this in the background, but all the close-ups and the lighting up and all of that uh, with the diorama will happen on February 18th. But uh, let me show you where we got to and a big 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 mistake I've made which I have to apologize for. So there it is, it's in the diorama, looks pretty cool doesn't it? I put a few pictures of close-ups and teases on uh, social media so you can check that out uh, and the links for that are in the description. As a matter of fact it's just one link now which takes you to all the other places which is good. Uh, but why am I apologising? Well if you remember from the last episode I was working on the aerial and I had to grind out the whole lot of the aerial and put lights in it and stuff like that. Well I filmed it all and uh, everything was ready to go but then when I started filming the diorama stupid me kept the file names the same so when I copied the files over they overwrit the files that I already had. Uh, so there's no footage of me finishing the ET ship aerial, but you'll be able to see that on the close up uh, when we do that on February 18th. But uh, today is all about the diorama and uh, how I went about building what you can see here. So uh, I've started this uh, pretty much from the point uh, I'm gonna start putting the sculptor mold on uh, and we continue throughout. Uh, there are things that I haven't filmed, things like putting the static grass on, but I do show you the procedures of what I did to do that. Uh, and I will interlude uh, this video with a bit of commentary just to let you know what I've done on some sections. So uh, without further ado, let's get cracking. So there we go, looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? But uh, I've got to wait for that to dry now, and they're being PVA, that's gonna take forever. Uh, I'll shape some bits, but uh, just to take the sharp edges off, but the sculptor mold is really gonna make this sort of like a ridge, which is going up the back, but I want a flat area, which is a clearance. When I put the sculptor mold on, it is gonna have some texture on here, uh, just to make it bumpy and not completely flat. But uh, yep, like how that goes, need to leave that for a day now. So as you can see, I have trimmed all the foam around and I've put some marks on there where the feet of the uh, spaceship is going to be. Uh, I've also masked around the edge here where the bark is because obviously I want to keep that clear and then I use my cutting tool just to, uh, if I show you around the side, just to make sure the whole side's straight. I will use some um, sculptor mold on the back as well even though you're not going to see it. It's nice to be neat all the way around. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is sculptor mold it. Okay, so it's a new day. This is the first time I've ever done this, but I've got some sculptor mold here. I'm gonna show you how I mix it, and then we're gonna start applying to that. Now, when we mix this, we're gonna be mixing two parts sculptor mold with one part water. I have got a jug uh, for that. I've got a nice big mixing bowl here, as you can see there. I've also got a pot of water, which I'm gonna be using just to wet all the tools I'm using. The tools I'm using are my hands and these tongue depressors uh, probably to mix it. I've also gone outside and uh, picked some stones up because what I want to do is I want to use the impressions of the stones to press into the sides of the ledges there to give sort of like a rough texture. I've got two kinds. I've got stuff with uh, sort of like some concave areas and some convex areas uh, and ones that are very convexy like that one. So it looks like the rocks are coming out rather than in all the time. So uh, I'm gonna be using those later on. But um, this is the first time I've ever attempted anything like this. So uh, I'm showing you now uh, like a professional, but believe me, this is a complete amateur at work here. So uh, it's either gonna go really good or really bad, but let's see how it goes. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the two to one first and see how it goes. So I'm gonna fill this up. Oh God, it's all like uh, one big lump. <laughs> Get in there. Oh, oh, that's a bit too much. So that's probably just one and a quarter there. So we've got one and a quarter of the sculptor mold there. I'm gonna put another three quarters in. I'll do it by hand this time. And then I'll put uh, one jar of water in here there you go that's about three quarters and we'll put that in there as well so what we're going to do is going to be it's going to be a very messy job this is going to fill this up with water and we'll start putting this in now this needs a good mix the working time on this 
is going to be around about 30 minutes till it's really hard so uh, I need to make sure this is very much mixed I'm just using my spatula for that before then so uh, just giving this a good go over now my hands are going to get messy anyway and I am going to need to make more as I do the diorama so I'm just going to mix this up good like this now I think I will get my hands dirty now that's why I put this sheet down just to make sure that's mixed up exactly like I want it get all the powder off the side there it's quite a nice little mixture unlike plaster of Paris it sticks to itself rather than your hands too much but I think we're uh, almost good to go just getting right at the bottom there let's fold that round okay that's good and we'll start this on the diorama so it's just a case of building it up so that's what I'm going to do now and then we smooth it off afterwards so get this all in now the, the reason that I've got water there is because if I need to smooth some edges off which I'm going to do afterwards just like this then that water is going to help with that but I'm just doing all around this ledge first I'm not going to be putting anything in these holes here where the uh, where the ship's going to be going but uh, let's get all of this all over this so what I'll do is I'm going to continue doing this and we'll come back once I've done all around the edge and we'll see where we're up to So now the sculptor mold is uh, dry, I'm painting on this uh, Vallejo earthen texture acrylic, uh, and I'm gonna put this all around the ridge first off. Uh, it's quite a tacky little thing, but it's uh, something that you wanna put on in big clumps like you can see there, and get that into all the gaps. I'm only putting this on the bits where uh, the soil and uh, gravel that I'm gonna be putting on here will be going down. So I've got this here, basically this is from the garden, which has been put in the oven for an hour and a half, to completely dry it out, then I've bashed it to death with a hammer. Uh, so I've got different sorts of coarse on there. I've got uh, a very coarse material, which I've got here, and I filtered that down into less coarse, and then the fine uh, stuff I've got is more like a powder. And that's what I'm gonna be putting on later. But basically we just need to put this all the way around and uh does take time <laughs> and it's a very very messy job uh that's why i've got my brush there once uh i've got it in most places i can just sweep that up to cover all of that texture that i put on and then that will cover that whole section there now all i'm doing at the moment is the inner ridge and then we seal it just with some uh, homemade sealer which is basically pva one part pva two parts water and a little bit of washing up liquid and uh, I'll put that on, I'll leave that till tomorrow, but that's what it's looking like so far. Now to do the rest of the base there, all I do again is put that earthen texture on, but a lot thinner coat this time, and then I use a powdered uh, soil rather than the uh, gravelly stuff that you saw in the ridge, and I put that all the way over, and then once again I sealed it uh, with my glue mix that I've uh, put in a spray bottle there. And there we go, that is the base layer all done, the ridge is done, all the soil's done, now the magic comes where we start putting the grass and the foliage and the lichen lichen like i, I can always pronounce it wrong <laughs> on there i'm really happy as it looks obviously you've got these little white paces there which are just the uh glue just waiting for that to soak in and dry but yep i am pretty happy with how that's looking okay here's some things i can do while i'm uh waiting for it to dry i can actually start putting some of the trees in around the bank there I'm going to have trees mostly on this ridge, but I do want to save one to put just slightly in front of the uh, spaceship there, just to add a bit of depth to it. But I'm sure you'll agree, it's looking pretty amazing. 
Now the trees are simply just cut from my fern trees in the garden, but they've been allowed to dry in a warm airing cupboard for around about two weeks. Uh, then they're sealed with a glycerine spray, uh, so now they'll keep their colour and the, uh, they won't lose needles. And now hopefully you get where my vision is with this. How cool does that look? <laughs> I'm so happy with that. But there you go, all we've got to do now is set all the grass and the lichen. Butter, lichen, lichen, I can never pronounce it. Um, I've got to let this dry. Uh, it's probably going to take a good 24 hours, but uh, so happy with how that looks. Now this is where things get really fiddly. I'm, uh, I bought some tropical fern uh, from MIG. Uh, and basically they come on these paper things. Look how small they are compared to my hands. And uh, you need to get these off and you need to just break the supports. I've got my... Uh, scalpel there and they make these sort of things you've got some spare leaves and then you've got ones which are all together let me try and pick that up to show you so we can have some furs furs ferns in the diorama so uh, i've got one off already i'm going to do the same with this one and then uh, these will go on the model too now there's the first application of static grass that's just two mil static grass i put on with my applicator here that i got from amazon nice cheap one to be honest with you um i have got some uh, dead 10 uh, mil grass here. I think that's going to be too much for what I want to use it for. I think the next layer I'm going to put on is actually going to be sent for me from Helder uh, Camacho. Static grass or 6 mil. I'm going to put a 6 mil just in certain spots around that area. But uh, I'm sure you'll agree. It's looking amazing. Uh, and all you do, basically, whatever you do, don't touch that side. <laughs> no matter what you do, I've already blown myself up a couple of times on it. Uh, but you just uh, hold the end of this just to the end of your diorama there. And then just shake this over the top around about that sort of distance I've been shaking it. And uh, you'll get your static grass standing upright as you can see there. Uh, but I need to put a longer one on as well. But uh, yeah, coming along. And as you can see, that's pretty much the diorama done. The only thing that I've got left to do is just touch up around the back and the sides, the bits you don't actually see, and then remove the masking tape that's around the bark. Uh, but I hope you'll appreciate that uh, looks really good, doesn't it? The uh, bushy material you see there is for Woodland Scenics. Uh, obviously, I put the fir trees, fern tree and plants uh, just by the rocks there. The rocks I've covered with a bit of moss and some grass as well. Um, but it looks pretty good and when the ship's on it it really does pop but uh, I did get that masking tape off in the end and that's what you see in the background now but that's pretty much the diorama complete now I'm telling you of all the builds I've done this one is definitely the most passionate I've been because basically when uh, Phil over at Spruverse and I put Phil's link down the bottom there so you can see his channel and where he's got with his yay monster one and we've pretty much finished at the same time we actually thought this was going to take like three months three or four months uh, and we finished it just at the start of february which is absolutely crazy but it's going to be great to have phil on the show on thursday and we're going to talk about our builds the problems we had the difference we had what we loved about it that sort of thing as well but i mean i absolutely love this because it was basically uh, a shell of an item from uh, Golden Army, they gave you the ship and then it's up to you what you do with it. You've seen me do the electrics, you've seen me do the diorama, you've seen me do my own things on it uh, to make this personal to me. And with the part work builds, you're pretty much building a standard model and you can add your own things to it, but with this, you can put your own love and personality into it, which is what I really, really enjoyed about this. Now, uh, I do believe Phil's done his diorama as well. And I think today, he's or yesterday, he was filming a, uh, a film regarding the finished product that he done uh, and we're going to again show that on the Thursday's live stream on the 18th so be sure to check in on that uh, for now you're just going to see it sitting in the background now I won't be lining it up uh, I did tease on social media uh, just the leg part which uh, I'll show you now because everyone's seen that on social media uh, but I think it'd be good to have a grand reveal in that as well uh, it looks a lot more impactful being on that log slice and I'll tell you now that was Mrs. Welder Wayne's idea to put it on a log slice so I'm glad she's come up with these great ideas and obviously with the uh, the uh, poster there the lithograph I think they call them uh, the Ian Campbell got me so thank you for that Ian it's really uh, came out looking good so that's going to be a new feature 
in the back of my videos all the time. And you know, 20 years down the line, I'm still going to get people saying, where did you get that ET spaceship from? <laughs> anyway, listen, I really do hope you like that series. Uh, that's the end of that now. And we're going to top it off, cherry on the cake with the live stream on February the 18th. So I hope you can join me at eight o'clock Greenwich Mean Time for that. Uh, until then, though, I really do hope you like that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.